Hello, my name's Annette Catalaris and I'm an Associate Professor at the Sydney Medical School and I'm the Director of Professional Medical Education. And I'd like to spend this time telling you about what we have on offer for you to study in the postgraduate space. Why would you choose Sydney Medical School? I think the most important reason is that we're a very large clinical school with a lot of academics and a lot of clinical teachers. So we have a broad range of experts to call on who teach into our courses. I'd also like to think we're at the forefront of postgraduate medical education in the country. And as an example of that, we've developed new degrees in clinical neurophysiology and breast surgery, which are amongst the very first in the country and in the world. I guess it's a dilemma once you've finished medicine, where do you go from there and what do you do? And we've looked at the likely career paths of what you might be following and thought about what will benefit you in your career and why you would undertake the courses in your career. And in your internal residency years, I guess you're starting to think about your specialty and needing to prepare for college barrier exams. So several of the units of study in many of the courses are designed to help you through those barrier exams. We also know that you need to be content experts. So many of the units are designed at giving you some subspecialty content expertise, and I'll go into that in a minute. We think it's really important to be clinician researchers, at least to understand the evidence when you practice. So most of our degrees have a basic research skill training within them. And it is good to be able to go into a job interview with a master degree from Sydney Medical School. As you have passed your primary examination of your college, you need different things out of our postgraduate coursework. So we've developed specialty skills training that is useful to you. And in some ways, in some of those units, that's practical skills training. And in some units, that's ways of thinking and ways of approaching clinical problems. Many of the courses are accredited for um, specialty colleges and I'll show you a list of those in a minute and it will also connect you with a lot of the clinical leaders in the fields that you're entering. This is a list of the vocational courses we have available at the medical school. Of course we have a very big and successful public health unit and they have several courses on offer and we cross list many of their units of study. But for vocational degrees these are the courses that we currently have on offer. In terms of accreditation, if you're undergoing the Masters of Medicine in Critical Care or Clinical Neurophysiology, the critical care colleges have all accredited these degrees for various purposes such as the scholar role or the training research requirement. The psychiatry degree is fully accredited by the Royal Australian and New Zealand College of Psychiatrists. Just so you better understand what's involved, what are you signing up for? A unit of study runs between 13 and 15 teaching weeks. A six credit point unit, which almost all of our units are to date, equates to about 130 hours of work per semester. So you really need to dedicate about 10 hours a week for each unit of study that you undertake. Now this time includes any face-to-face -face teaching, any lectures that we provide online or podcasts, all assessments, including assignments and examinations, and the time that you need to put aside to study. Our experience is that most working students cope with one to two units per semester. This is the basic design of several of our degrees, not all, but several. Most importantly, of critical care, clinical neurophysiology, metabolic health, paediatrics, to some extent HIV, and what it comprises is a core unit, a compulsory unit, of introduction to clinical epidemiology and a capstone unit. Those things you don't get any choice about if you're undertaking the Master of Medicine. But the, you can then choose four stream-specific units, and you'll find many more than four subjects listed in the stream. And this is where you get to start tailoring the degree to your needs. You can also choose two electives. We've listed electives in your stream, in your degree. If you want to do others outside of those electives, you can apply to us and we may or may not approve them. But there's a lot of electives to choose from. All these degrees uh, have articulated degrees within them. So say if you think, well, I'm only going to do a graduate certificate, you can enrol in a graduate certificate, but then you're really enjoying it, as we've had several students do this year, and they convert to a master degree. 
Likewise, if you've enrolled in a master and you just find that you can't cope anymore or you've had enough, you can take your degree at the graduate certificate or graduate diploma level, provided you have fulfilled the requirements of the degree. I want you to clearly understand that you can't take two degrees for one group of study. So if you've completed four units of study um, in the graduate certificate and you graduate with a graduate certificate and then you decide to undertake the master degree, you must accumulate that many units of study in addition. There is an advanced option available to those who perform very well in the exams. In, in the course uh, greater than 75% average in the stream specific units and those advanced options are research based units. I'm going to talk briefly about the Master of Medicine in Critical Care that we launched last year. I have to say this has proven to be an extremely popular degree and we now have close to between 350 and 400 students undertaking the degree. So in this degree, the capstone unit is called the Evidence and Ethics in Critical Care and this will really challenge your thinking and make you actively think in your clinical decision making as to where there is evidence and where there isn't evidence and how you can plug those gaps. Uh, the stream specific units are the basic sciences to help you prepare for your primary examination and then there's a range of other units that you might choose according to whatever specialty you want to undertake. So for example if you're an ED doctor but you're interested in retrieval medicine look to the retrieval units. If you're an anaesthetist you might want to develop your knowledge in pain or you might want to develop intraoperative monitoring skills which would really separate you out in the market at the moment. Of course, units of study like teaching clinical skills by simulation or um, communication and clinical reasoning are very valuable non-technical skills that will stand you in very good stead in your ongoing career. And this is a brief list of the electives available to you. I think we've covered that. Um, so it's horses for courses. You might all enrol in critical care, but according to the stream you want to follow, you will enrol in your stream specific units. The Master of Medicine Metabolic Health was also launched last year, and this has proven in, uh, of great interest to doctors and to clinical nurse consultants, pharmacists, physiotherapists. Um, given that, you know, one in three, one in four patients presenting to hospitals these days have diabetes. Whether you're enrolled in this stream or in other streams, you might want to take up some of these units as your electives or stream specific units. This is a very well taught degree. Uh, it's discussion board based and case based and there's some high quality face to face teaching. This degree was launched this year and it is literally the only postgraduate course we think in the world but definitely in Australia. Um, and this has two arms to it. One arm is aimed at those going into anaesthetics who want to become proficient in intraoperative monitoring and the other is for neurophysiology technicians or neurologists who are interested in uh, EEG, in clinic um, neurological testing. And this gives you an idea of what pathway you'd follow according to where you want to end up. The Master of Medicine Paediatrics was uh, one of our first uh, vocational degrees and it is a highly regarded course and again it's, this course is fully online and it uses case-based teaching. It always gets incredibly good evaluations. The teachers are thoughtful and, and responsive and if you're interested in paediatrics I think you'll get a lot out of this degree. The big news is that next year we're launching an internal medicine Master of Medicine degree in collaboration with the University of Melbourne. And this is a very exciting and, and uncharted territory for us. And this will be aimed at people who want to enter basic physician training or for those already in physician training who want to subspecialise. It will also be suitable for uh, clinicians who are practicing general medicine, for example, general practitioners or general physicians. Um, we're, we're lucky to be able to draw on the resources of both the University of Sydney and University of Melbourne, so you can be sure of a high quality, um, up-to-date, interesting approach to all the ologies, you know, the respirology, the cardiology, the rheumatology. You'll be able to uh, undertake all those units of study but the approach will be uh, in largely case-based. It will be a wonderful opportunity to fill in your gaps or to develop your interests. 
and are not there yet, but we're hoping soon to be able to offer combined degrees. The Master of Surgery is a complex degree, and this, is an, this gives you an overview. There's a lot of information on the website about the Master of Surgery, and I've got contact details for people to speak with at the end of this talk. But this gives you an overview of the streams available. I just want to point out that the breast surgery stream for by coursework is only available to those who already hold their fellowship or are on the advanced training scheme. I just briefly want to speak about studying anatomy at the University of Sydney. If you're interested in surgery or an interventional specialty and you need advanced anatomy knowledge, the basic course is 5034 and that's aimed at helping you get through the primary examination. Um, that requires some face-to-face -face attendance, but that's every second Saturday, and a lot of the content is now online. This is our gold standard anatomy course, and we believe probably one of the best in Australia. And we say that because it's very small groups, so in general it's six students to a cadaver, and you're taught by older surgeons who have had years and years of clinical experience and subspecialty experience. So an abdominal surgeon will be teaching you abdominal anatomy and an, a head and neck surgeon will be teaching you head and neck anatomy. So you'll have applied anatomy knowledge. Now the interesting thing now is with this course is it's broken into four units of study and you can undertake separate units of study. So you can, if you know that you want to be a, um, a say, a, a hand surgeon, you can undertake the surgical anatomy of the limbs only. Or, you know, if you want to be a head and neck surgeon, only undertake 5027. You can only take these units of study if you enrol in this degree, which you can do concurrently with the Master of Surgery, and these units can be credited to the Master of Surgery. And this is some more information along those lines. I also would like to let you know that we've fully revised physiology and pharmacology for surgeons. I think this is going to be a very well taught and interesting unit and will well prepare you for the um, surgical primary examination. And here's some contact details. Feel free to drop me a line if you've got any questions. If the questions are about enrolment issues, go straight to Sydney Student but I'm happy to answer any general questions about the degrees or point you in the right direction. Thanks very much.